So you've seen the new Char Griller Auto Kamado Egg Corn. All the crazy cool stuff it can do. And you're thinking, hey, I've got an egg corn already, or I've got an existing barbecue guru or fireboard to drive. So I can just buy the egg corn or buy the guru. And if I've got one of those, I can just buy the other half of it and basically have an auto Kamado for less of an investment because I already have one of the things. It's not exactly that simple. There are some things that you need to know before you attach a guru to a Kamado. And we're gonna talk about them right now. First off, I wanna get this out of the way right now. The Auto Kamado has some sort of wizardry going on in this controller. It can do things I cannot replicate with a fan controlled draft system on a regular egg corn. The biggest thing there is somehow it can manage to run at 200 and 225. And before you ask, I verified it with different thermometers. It's not just lip service on the front of the display telling you it's running at 225. It is legitimately running at 225 without any bad smoke. That sounds kind of weird to say like that. It doesn't have any notes of an extinguishing fire or anything running improperly in that fire. It just keeps that small fire small and lets it do what it needs to do to maintain 225. Now, if you're familiar with the channel at all, I really don't recommend running these pits that low just because it's such a well-insulated pit that to cook at that temperature, you have to have such a small fire that it's almost impossible to regulate on your own, unless you're the Auto So while I wouldn't recommend trying to do that on a regular egg corn or another Kamado with a Guru or a fireboard, these are the things you can do. Let me tell you what I've learned in my time running a Guru on an egg corn. So to begin with, of course, you're gonna need your, your fan and your fan adapter. You know, this will replace the, uh, the lower vent and then your, your fan just plugs into that and that's how that works. The fan will then plug into, for instance, your fireboard right there. And then suddenly we've got a temp probe that goes into the grill and we're managing the fire based on what the computer tells the fan to do. It's basically like turbocharging versus natural aspiration. This is all wonderful. However, this is where it gets tricky with Kamados. Kamados are extremely well insulated. When they heat up, they hold thermal mass incredibly well. So while in this case, the egg corn is heat soaking or in other cases, the ceramic is heat soaking, the temperature of the cooker may be lower than it reflects. However, you're basically charging it up. So if you put a fan on that system, blowing on that fire, trying to increase that fire so that your temperature probe is reading a specific temperature, unknowingly, you are making that fire huge to the point where it's not going to be allowed to go back. Now that, that heat is not going to be able to escape and dissipate. It's soaked into that steel or soaked into that ceramic. Next thing you know, you wanted to cook at 275 and your cooker is at 500 and won't come back down. So this is the ultimate trick. It's really not that difficult, but until you figure this out in your standard operating procedure for your Kamado with the draft system, you're gonna be fighting it constantly. To make this work, what you're going to do is light your fire like you normally would in your egg corn. Basically set it to come up to the temperature you want to run at like you normally would if you weren't putting a draft system on it at all. And when I say this, go ahead and hook up whatever you're using to run your fan so that the Temperature probe is reading so you can see what's going on in there. Basically, to be able to not have to babysit this pit later, we're going to pay extreme attention for the first 10 minutes of firing this pit up. Once we get within, say, 50 degrees of that target temperature, start shutting your vents down like you normally would. Take that top vent down to just, just over the half moon and continue just to let it creep up. Now, right about when it gets to the target temperature, then you can put the fan into the port. At that point, you can allow the draft system to take control of the Kamado. I always recommend having your top vent more closed than open. The draft system can overcome having a closed top vent. It can blow more air and basically force it out the top. If you leave it too open though, that fire will grow on its own and it may get away from you. Basically what all these tips boil down to is even though you've got a fan controlling your egg corn or whatever Kamado, You've still got to keep that fire in check. Don't let it run off on its own because it absolutely can. And if you've had a Kamado for long, you know that if it does, you're grilling now, you're not smoking anymore. I hope that helps. That's something I learned a long time ago when I was running this particular pit 
on a draft at competitions. It runs great, but boy, if you let it get up above the temperatures, you're not coming back down and that draft can't stop enough air. You have to shut it down and it's just a whole ordeal. You just don't want to do that. Just let it come up to the temperature naturally, then put the fan on it and let the fan babysit the fire. Or, and hear me out on this, just go buy an auto Kamado. It's, I, don't, I don't know how it does what it does. It's incredible. Now in the meantime, if you're new to egg corns that aren't the auto Kamado and you need to know how to manage that fire, hey, meet me over here. Let's go get you sorted.